Alright guys, what's going on? I am the one, the only, the W-O-O-K-I-E, joined here as always. Well, no, not as always. This is kind of a special event. I get so used to saying that, but Big Z is on assignment this week. He's trapped in his home, and his wife won't let him out. That's a total lie, because I just made that up. But this week, we have a very close friend of mine, Mr. JR. What's up, JR? How's it going, Key Forge community? Very excited to be here with you, Wookie. Yeah, I mean, this is... Uh, I kind of play it... When I first started the podcast, not going to lie to anybody. No offense to Z or anything. I love Z. Z's my boy, but... You were the one I had in mind to like kind of do this podcast with. I know, and actually, when you approached me, I was really excited. Uh, being from our local KeyForge community, um, I think that it's great to have you here in a larger audience. Um, but frankly, I just know the time commitment, and you've been very, very uh, giving of yourself to the KeyForge community. I just teach, and I teach in an elementary school, and I'm very, very, very busy. Uh, between that and a couple other pieces. So I got two little ones. And I had to be very honest and say I just couldn't do it. It, it hurt my heart, but I think Z has done a great job, and, uh, and yeah. you as well. So you're doing awesome. Well, thank you much. I do appreciate the kind words, obviously. But we're here to talk about something today. Obviously, coronavirus is is going, I guess, just going. I don't even know. I, I want to say it's running wild, but it seems like it's slowed down. And I could be wrong on that, too. Um, I don't hear, I hear news about it every single day, but I hope it's getting better as my wife, I know she's behind me, she's shaking her head. Um, because I guess here in Wisconsin, at least we're supposed to reach our peak in the next two to three weeks. Um, but it's been very quiet. So maybe we're getting to some back, um, getting back some sense of normalcy. And I, I hope so. I, I hope that, uh, you know, the world is being able to adjust and be able to get better. And I just send out my things and wishes for everyone in our KeyForge community. You know, stay strong, stay inside, keep playing online, do the best you can. Things will return back to normal. Um, it was pretty odd. We actually had snow here today. So <laughs> everything is pretty crazy here in Wisconsin. But I just, you know, there's a lot of chaos that's happening in the world. But don't fear. Just keep going. Keep forging those keys. Yeah, keep keep pushing forward. I mean, obviously, like you said, we're, we're going to get back to normalcy eventually that's the hope i think we're all in here um wishing for i just saw an article today that uh gen con is actually either considering delaying or postponing or canceling which that would be a total bummer um especially for the keyforge community that's kind of been one of our i guess quote unquote well known two vault events um and you know the other one i'm thinking of is origin we didn't even have origin was a two vault event no, origin, that was a, should... origin was a one one uh, one vault. Origin was a one vault event. Yeah. I thought it was a two. Yeah, uh, but... Doctor Sheep and I went to it. Yeah, I, as I say, I know you guys went to it. I thought it was a two for some reason, but uh, that should be actually coming up, right? Uh, so the piece, there's a little bit background. Uh, Origins was last that I had seen, and this was a bit ago, so a couple weeks ago. They had kind of put the pause button, and they were coming back to look at it, I want to say May. And May the 1st is where I had looked at kind of seeing, um, just evaluating what circumstances were at at that point. But they were still needing guidance from, obviously, local governments and larger mm -hmm. entities. Um, I know that on the backside, I've, um, I actually have a piece where I volunteer at Gen Con as well. And so on that side, we actually had been contacted back in March in regards to a potential delay or a potential cancellation, depending on how bad things got. So even back then, Gen Con has been on top of it, but it, it's still si similar to uh, kind of pause and wait to see what's happening. Yeah, I just I actually looked it up because I didn't know. I thought it was coming up much. I thought it was in May for some reason, but um, Origins this year would have been scheduled, and I don't know what they're planning on now, uh, June 17th through the 21st. So obviously, if I'm sure, like every day is a new adventure in the world we're living in right now because you don't know what's coming next. Um, we're under the Safe at Home, Safer at Home Act here in Wisconsin. I know some states are, some states aren't. Is that am I correct on that? I'm trying to figure out where where that is. I know most states are. 
honestly, I'm a really bad person to pull for that. I don't really <laughs> watch news, and so I, I apologize, but I don't honestly know. Yeah, I just I think most states are. I know there's a few states that aren't. Um, only because I've talked to people from those states, and they're like, "No, it's it's business as usual here right now. Like nothing has changed. Like life is just kind of continued." Um, and those were a couple of southern states. I think Alabama was the one I was told about that had the most. Like they were just kind of business as usual, nothing new. So, anyways, we're here today. Two weeks ago, we took a little break last week. Uh, mainly because of my crummy internet, um, and it's not my crummy internet. It's everybody in Wisconsin is kind of facing this fun funnel, I guess you could say, of internet being there, not being there, having issues, slowing down, not working. I can't tell you how many times I've been on the phone with it's Spectrum now. It used to be Time Warner Cable, um, but it's Spectrum now, and trying to just get stuff fixed as simple as like I'm not getting internet, so. We're here today. Two weeks ago, we talked about it. We were going to get on to Tilt. So, Tilt, what can you tell me about it, JR? I know you felt it multiple times. Yeah, I'm like, okay, so you're bringing me in for Tilt. That's really ironic. Is this trying it to was kind of ironic. the Keyforge community of like, oh, here's our representative for whoever goes off. Uh, you have a real anger issue. You have Tilt issues. Um, right. I, I think the joke for Wookie is that... I seem to do well in our local community, but honestly, anytime I hit a vault tour, I cannot, I can't even win a flip of a coin. So uh, (laughs) it is literally that bad. Uh, Things that just are statistically anomalies, they magically happen against me. So it's really pretty funny. Um, But with that, it gives me a really nice perspective as to, you know, how to deal with tilt. And so tilt to me, and I can give that definition is this, um, I don't know, I almost feel the blood cursing, you know, coming through my veins. I feel uh, I'm getting warmer, I'm sweating, my heart's beating a little bit faster, and I'm getting frustrated and angry. And all of a sudden, you get into that flight or flight response, and you stop thinking logically. And so for me, that's kind of my little quick definition of, all right, you've gone off, and it can happen because you see an opponent that you know plays a certain style really slow or or goes ahead and seems to always eke it out against you maybe it's just some event that you're really tired um i I had an event that i went to where my child my seven-year-old had thrown up so i was up the whole night before um it can just come because of a series of cards that you see playing out and you're like no all you have is one out and that's the card that you then see being played against you so that rise of your frustration, anger, tensing of kind of muscles. Um, that, that's really what I think of when I think of tilt. So there's a couple diagrams we have to actually look at for tilt. I'll put these in the show notes down below so you guys can actually look at them. Um, being someone that did do kind of semi-pro poker for a little bit, um, I'm, I'm fully aware of tilt um, and I get to uh, fully deal with tilt. And really what you're going through when you're going on tilt is what we call, you can either call it one of two things, and I've seen it called both ways. You're going through a mini panic attack. Um, so even people who aren't prone to panic attacks, when you're going through tilt, you really are going through a panic attack. Um, your your adrenaline's high. Your blood pressure actually does raise um, when you go through tilt. Or you can consider it a mini bout of depression. And I've never come off and said this on any show. I've never said it on any of the shows I've done before. But as somebody who does suffer with depression, um, this is kind of what we go through every day. Um, You're going through it in a much smaller fashion. Um, So the one diagram I want to look at really quick is is it kind of shows the diagram um, of what happens, why you go on tilt. So the first one is player gets punished by a bad or careless play. So maybe it's not bad or careless. This is uh, in poker right now. So you're talking about a lot of math, Keyforge again, a lot of math involved in it. Um, But maybe it's not careless on your part. Maybe you made a calculated decision and it just kind of blew up in your face. It's happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to Jay. Has it happened to you, JR? Oh, yeah, it has. And I would also argue, while you can see a careless play, it could have been a careless play from your opponent. 
that really allowed them to walk into something. I mean, Wild Worm pulling into the card that they need is a perfect example of that careless play. And you're like, yeah. okay, great, thanks. I, yeah. gr- I don't even know what to do to respond to that. So that's at that point, that is when the, you know, the quote unquote tilting event occurs. And then frustration sets in. And what really makes tilt go full blown is the player wants to make up for the mistake or get back at their opponent. So this is really a revenge thing. You're trying to somehow punish them for either their misdeed to you or your careless play. So, I mean, I'm sure you've had that time, JR, where, you know, that, that wild wormhole into the, just that one, that one card they need out of, you know, 20 some odd in their deck and they just happen to wild wormhole into it, right? Uh, yeah, that's right. It's the one out and there it is. And I know that, okay, you just cycled your deck. You should have a very low probability of pulling it, but it happened. There it is. So, and then the player makes, the next step would be player makes careless slash bad gameplay decisions in order to re- rectify the situation. I don't read well from paper, but um, that's basically your tilt cycle. Um, and why it happens. The other one it starts from, it, it really kind of goes into your emotions, um, where you start out at optimism, you get to excitement, thrill, enthusiasm, and then you come down into worry, anger, depression. Um, and that is that is the cycle that you're you're going through. It's the highs and lows of kind of playing through that event. And once you get to that anger slash depression uh, cycle, that's when the second diagram, that first diagram I talked about, when that event occurs, and then you start really getting into your your full tilt and and the anger. So, how do we avoid tilt, Jr? Do you have any ways that you try to just avoid tilt? I honestly, I think that it first starts with your prep work. So, getting enough sleep, getting enough food, getting enough water, um, entering some of those big events, and not setting the expectation too high. I think that I've honestly entered into tilt more times than not because I'm like, oh, I am going to make it this far. And so then as you take a first loss, then you're like, okay, now you start questioning it. Oh, here's a second loss. You're out. You're done. And so just having this expectation can really hurt you. But I also think, again, depending on what the event is, if it's sealed, looking through the cards, knowing the cards, knowing what you're looking for, having a plan of action, now, with Sealed, yeah, it's whatever you're going to pick from your three decks. And That's when you end bag. up with all three Brobnar in Worlds Collide for the Open, and it, it happens. You know, you, you, yeah. you play, it's it's a game of chance. Um, but on the other side, if you're playing Archon, then knowing your deck and, you know, making sure that you know some of those little intricacies, that really helps so that you can be prepared and help kind of cut back on that tilt. So... Everything you kind of just talked about is what they call pre-triggers. Um, a pre-trigger is, you know, stress at home, financial worries, sleep. Uh, maybe you went out drinking the night before um, and you're just not adequately ready for the for the tournament ahead. Um, these are all things that can affect your tilt status. And they do affect your tilt status. This is actually, this isn't, this isn't Dr. Wookie coming in. This is actually studies that somebody did. I don't know who, but somebody did. Um, coming into this so these are all things that can affect you guys coming into the event now you're on tilt right yep we we've already figured out some of the things that are going to affect us coming into the event now you've made your decisions and you're fully on tilt how do you get out of it i mean for me the big piece is to again take a deep deep breath Go ahead and refocus. You have to get yourself out of that moment in time where whatever caused you to get frustrated, upset, you have to move past it because you have to be really, really focused on the game. So again, taking deep breath, I'll actually count to 10. I go ahead and do something that's silly. I I teach elementary again, so I I call it spider push-ups. So I put all five fingers together and actually push. Um, But a little bit of tension um, for yourself can help release some of that stress. Um, those are a couple things that I do. I guess, what would you do, Wookie? Well, okay, so I do a few things. Now, number one, I'm really good at it, and I don't know if it's from years of uh, doing it, um, 
number one, going in, I always set low expectations for myself. Uh, both videos, I think, both videos that I did for both Prime events, I think one I said I was going to go 0 and 5, and the other I said 3 and 2. Um, for me personally, um, the goal is always to day two or top cut it. I think that's everyone's goal. I don't know why you're at a tournament if that's not your goal. Uh, but I always set lower expectations for myself in the event of, and this isn't me just coming off like, I know a lot of people are thinking like, oh, well, you just set low expectations. You set low expectations to make yourself feel good. So when I said that that one day I was going to go at best, I thought I would go, what was it, two and three or something like that? Yeah, when we were in the, um, pri- when we were in the prime, we're outside in Illinois, and I still remember you asking, and you're like, what are you going to do? And I'm like, oh, I'm going to make... I'm going to go ahead and make cut and I'm going to go, I think it was four, two or five, one. And you're like, but, yeah. Yeah, I think it was four, one. And, and, four, then, one yeah. and then you're like, uh, yeah, I'm going to go. Two, oh, and five. Three. Yeah. I think I said, oh, and five. Um, I was not like, I had too much luck just knowing I had too much luck in worlds collide sealed before that. I'm like, eventually this is going to come bite me. Like, it's just the way it is. I can't pull good decks every time. Like, it's that's just, just not reasonable. It's just such a funny, odd piece to me because my mentality is very type A personality and I'm driven and it's like, oh, I'm going to get this. I'm going to push. But there's so much that I just don't have control of in this game. And, and that's a perfect example of I, I need to set the expectation lower, but it, it does lead into some of the issues that I see in maybe some of the bigger, uh, the vault tours specifically. Yeah, I, I always set my expectations low. That way, when I supersede those, I you know you leave the day uh, kind of feeling good. Um, that's just how I've always done it in those kind of situations. Um, the other thing I do is when I get tilted, because I've been there where I know I just made a bad play. Um, I am a well, I am a smoker. Sorry, people. Um, I just go outside. Like after the done is the game is done, um, and you've seen me do this. I don't talk to anybody. I don't go towards anybody. I literally just go outside and and I have a cigarette. Um, for those of you who don't smoke, this is also a way of dealing with it. Just going outside, you got to reflect on what you did wrong. Know you did it wrong. That's the biggest thing is the recognition of yeah, I screwed up. It was my fault. Because at some point during tilt, you have to have that self-recognition of where you made the mistake. Because one of the biggest things they talk about in a lot of tilt articles is self-acknowledgement. Knowing that there is one thing that is the same in all of these games, and there's only one thing that is the same in all of your games, is it's you. So knowing that you made the mistake and how to improve and to not make that mistake again, I think is really crucial. Whether this is just going outside and taking a deep breath and reflecting on it. But then part two is there, there's always a part two to this. You have to keep what, what a lot of people call a pitcher's memory. You have to let that one go, forget about it and move on to the next one. And that's and still remember would... it, but let it go. Yeah, And that's what I was going to say is you got to forgive yourself because we all make bad plays, uh, some more than others, but if you continue to dwell on it, it leads to bigger issues. And in my opinion, larger tilt issues, personally. Yeah, no, you're going to continue to beat yourself up over it, which means you're probably going to continue to make the same mistake. Um, some other things that you can do, um, I've seen people do it a lot. Um, during rounds, go to the bathroom, splash some water on your face. Take a, I mean, this, this is all kind of self-reflection events where, Splash some water on your face. Just kind of knock yourself out of it. Because you do have to, in every every tournament scenario, have that short memory. You can't beat yourself up over a loss in last round because that there's nothing you can change anymore. It's over, right? Like, the game is over. The the paper has been signed. You're moving on to the next one no matter where you're at. So just just keep on that, that trucking mentality and keep moving. And I would say the sooner you can actually get to that spot and let it go, the better off that you'll be. So if you mm-hmm. can do that right after you've had the bad beat, amazing. But realistically, take a couple deep breaths. Identify as soon as you can, hey, I'm now going on tilt, and I need to get off it sooner rather than later. Because if you, if you wait until the round is over, 
you probably lost that round. Whereas if you can identify it and start to make changes, refocus, take a couple deep breaths there, you may be able to still salvage that game. Yeah, for sure. I mean, you can definitely take some a couple deep breaths before you continue. You know, again, reflect, realize you made the mistake, but don't try, you know, I guess it's that point of, you know, I'm going to punish my opponent. You don't have to punish them. You just have to win. You know what I mean? Like, you just have to kind of keep trucking through it and do your best. And knowing you did your best at the end and realizing you didn't make any more mistakes continuing on, that's probably a, a good way to keep your head up. Um, some other things that they say to do is get something to eat or drink. It's Now we're talking about just getting your mind off it. just And again, letting it go and just moving on. Any any thoughts on that one? Because I always lose after lunch. I don't know about you guys, but um, my first loss always comes after the lunch break. Don't ask me why. Uh, I will say my big loss at Gen Con came after lunch, and I yeah. knew exactly what I needed to stay away from, and I still could not pull the trigger on that piece, and it was so frustrating. So yeah, definitely a little tilt there. Um, my bigger issue is, I, I still think it is the expectation. So I come in, you get the nervousness, and you start to lose a little bit of focus. So knowing your probabilities, knowing what you got to do, and then just more repetitions to keep pushing through it. Yeah. I mean, you got to kind of look at it. And I mean, I am, I don't know what type of personality I am. Um, I've done many, being in sales, you do a lot of personality tests. Um, I am what they call a blue personality. Um, most of my decisions are made off of hard facts and numbers. Um, which is not wrong. Like it's very correct. That's how I've always made decisions. Um, but you know, you kind of got to realize, Hey, there are, you know, sometimes what we're talking anywhere between a hundred and 200 people at this event. And we're going to cut to either a top eight or a top 16. Your chances are pretty slim. No matter how good your deck is, your chances are just chances. Everything being equal your chances of making a day two are slim. And I think for me, keeping that in the back of my mind has always really kind of relaxed me and put me in a good position to do my best during the day. It's it's, <laughs> it's a great attitude. I mean, I, I don't have anything else to really add to it. So, Oh, okay. Sounds good. So, I mean, that's really your steps to avoiding tilt. And I shouldn't say avoiding tilt, to dealing with tilt, because you're going to get tilted. There's never a point in time where you're not. It's going to happen. Um, the biggest thing is, is the players who do very, very well have the ability to, again, keep that pitcher's mindset and move on faster. The players who kind of fall towards the bottom typically like to hang on to a, a few emotional factors. I can definitely, and I think I can definitely second that the emotional pieces. That's the piece where I find myself. I mean, again, I, I'm an elementary teacher. So I have a heart. And when I see either playing a kid or playing certain types of individuals, I don't come in with that killer mentality as often as I should. And that is a fault on me. That's an interesting, actually, that's a very interesting note where you say you don't come in with that killer mentality. Um, Because I wouldn't classify myself as being like, when I go into these tournaments, having a killer mentality. Um, I'm just going to come in. I'm going to do my best. and I'm going to kind of continue from there. I guess, yeah, you're you're right. Like, thinking about it now, I don't care who's sitting across the table from me. I'm going to try to win. Um, whether that be somebody of a peer of mine or whether that be a, a younger child. I, of course, I don't see many younger of people at the events normally. There's been a few. I know at Indy we had a, quite a number of kids at the event, but I've never really, like, I'm just... I'm trying to win. Do you think that affects you a lot, though? Um, I will tell you at a certain point in the different vault tours, yeah. There have been points where I've already lost two games. And I, I'll, I'll tell you that I've I've played a child. And, you know, at that point, I'm already out. I understand that. There's nothing more for me to gain. And so I don't have the same focus. And I go through. I've also helped teach my opponents in the vault tour how to be able to do something which has come back directly to bite me because that allowed them to win. But I still see myself first and foremost as a teacher. 
And so that's part of my mentality is that I am here to really build the game. And if I'm mm-hmm. going to help someone else, great. I think in the long run, that's most important. But yeah, there have been uh, there have been specific events where I have been placed with a child. It has been a later round where I've already lost two matches. And frankly, I have drastically scaled it back. I scaled it back one game so much that I actually lost that game. And so that's the balance. It's kind of like playing your little kid. I have a four and a seven-year-old. You know, you want to have this fine little balance here where you're playing a game. You just don't want to smash them. And I've seen that where some of these kids come in and they're just absolutely hammered by some of the adults. And for me, that's my heart here where I struggle to do that. And so I don't. I look at it. I can read people very, very well. And honestly, there, there was even uh, someone who was much, much, much better than me during Gen Con. And we were facing in a much later round, but they were upset because they got ousted because they played their own teammate. And at that point, literally the whole game was me talking them down because they were very self-defeated and kind of attacking themselves. I, I just... I. I think that we have to be able to build each other up. And at that point, I was already out. I had lost um, the first game. They understood that. Um, so it wasn't a problem for me. I also had, I knew the deck that I was seeing and I did not have the outs. So looking at those pieces, I will look at a deck and I'll play my best. I'll play to the ability. Um, but there have been times where maybe I take an off approach if I'm already two, two games out. Because it's not going to impact me. I mean, okay, I, I gain a few extra shards. But if you're already sitting on the bottom half of the tables, you know, cheer on your buddies who are further up. I just don't see that need to go ahead and slam a, a kid who's learning, who's 10, who's 12. I'd much rather help them than to go ahead and say, oh, you forgot this, you lose as a result. That's just not my personality. I, at the end of the day, I have to walk home and I still have to be me. So that's kind of just something I live by. Do you think it affects you in the early rounds, though, too? Because um, you you and I have had, uh, just for kind of the people at home who don't know, you and I have had many a long talks about, like, ball tours yeah. and things like that. Um, because you, you sometimes you just – day two has eluded you. Yeah, day two um, has, has. And it's odd because, I mean, I played in two primes. I made top eight in both. I do very well in our local. But the who I am seated with – um, for my vault tours, there has been some bad luck. There's been some bad beats and yeah, there, there've just been a series of events. I try and come in with the positive mentality of I'm here to have fun. Um, but I, as I said earlier, I'm a type A personality, so I do push hard early. I don't think it impacts me on the first round. Um, I do see it impacting me once I take that first loss. And that's the, mm. the key piece. And, and that's honestly a big piece that I see that's different between you or between Dr. Sheep or some of the other people that I have known from the various boards is th- there's very much a mentality of, okay, I took the first loss. I did the best I could. But now I need to really kind of take and have this strong foundation because I need to be 100% focused not to lose a second. And, and I've, I've seen that... S- um, as I'm in that piece where my focus is not necessarily where it needs to be. I've also, because of my background, because of my profession, as I said, I read people very, very well. So I read individuals and I make some judgment calls on some things that, yes, impact my game. So I, I can be very honest about that. No, it's just, it's an interesting fact. Like, with you kind of saying that it was, it's not something that I would have thought of. Like, I mean, obviously your profession is, I mean, everybody knows you're, you're an elementary school teacher. Um, but I'm a salesperson. My, my, our professions are apples and oranges, right? Like very different from each other. I, I, I guess I've never viewed myself as kind of that shark that kind of is going to, I look for those outs. I mean, this is something I'm going to actually kind of look for now, kind of coming into everything. Because it's very interesting to think about that, because, like, looking for that out where my opponent makes the mistake to take advantage of. Um, I've never thought of it that way. Because, I mean, I've always thought I'm a very fair player. You know, I'm not... I've never cheated knowingly. 
You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I'm sure we've all done it unbeknownst to us. Um, I mean, just recently, there was a time where I, I don't know, Dan, uh, did, it was you and me, actually, where you're like, you win. And I'm like, no, I don't. What are you talking about? Like, I, have no, I don't even, you could have taken the win. You didn't. Yeah. But you're like, I, I you, you get, you get this back because I had it captured on shred. It's like, oh, I forgot about that. Like. You know, I mean, just your, your caring. Men- I wonder if your caring mentality has held you back more than we actually think, because you play well. I mean, you're you're at the level of me or Doctor Sheep, but like again, day two has just not been your way. Sealed is one thing. I've always I've told everybody, sealed is sealed is sealed. You are literally throwing yourself into Pandora's box. Uh, more than one way, you know, more ways than one. You're getting three decks, but to be honest with you, especially in Worlds Collide, <laughs> yeah, like the difference between a good deck and a mediocre mediocre deck is like the difference of a card. I've I've noticed that in a lot of Worlds Collide, like where in Coda it was very like black and white. You were able to very much tell what where you're going to be. AOA not so much. I think AOA was very like you could tell the good decks and you could tell the bad decks but there was a lot of middle ground yes there was a lot of middle ground in aoa i agree with you and having played from the beginning yes coda was easy to read i do think it takes additional skill for worlds collide um but again i do see that as a separating factor for individuals on knowing your cards knowing the combinations um and seeing potential in things that maybe others haven't seen sure and not only that, I've I've noticed a lot on like DOK where like we were just talking about this before we went live, like to have a deck that's so highly rated but it just doesn't have a wing condition. Um, we were just talking about a deck that's what was it, sixty eight SAS, and it's like it's got pieces, but it just it, it's missing the gear. Yes, and I've got decks that are in the you know seventy seven seventy eights that just they can't win. And the decks that I have that are much lower on the SAS rank for Worlds Collide ha- are win in a much faster clip. So I think the SAS ratings for Worlds Collide have been very interesting and kind of all over the place um, as far as everything goes. And that's, I will tell you, that is 100% due to dinosaurs. Some of the dinosaurs are very highly rated on there. But if they are missing a piece or two, that's going to jack your SAS score up but the deck itself is just not going to be able to function. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I do think that it can come down to a card or two difference that just really impacts whether a deck is viable at taking it to that next level or not. Right. But guys, that's all we're going to have for today. We're going to keep these kind of, uh, as we kind of continue through the coronavirus, I think we'll probably keep these a little bit shorter um, just because number one, why not? We're kind of all done with tilt. I think we've we've discussed, we've talked about it. We've gave you some ways to deal with it. Um, if you guys have any other ways you guys deal with tilt, let us know in the comment section down below. Um, I'd love to hear your guys's what you guys do, um, and kind of measure those up because everybody kind of everybody's going to deal with it differently. I can give you a hundred different things to do, and it may not work for you. Um, there's a lot of different. Everybody's different. Everybody's personality is different. And that's that's pretty big because, you know, what works for one person might not work for the other. And so, and we, we've kind of even figured that out here right now. Just personality wise, we're kind of different. And I would also add in Wookie. I'd love to hear everyone in the Keyforge community kind of their perspective because I do go ahead and frequent boards and read up all the time. So I'm looking to be able to better my game. And maybe that's an area that, yeah, I have been letting myself down. Um, I I know that oftentimes the piece that we talk about is I overthink things. I don't, I I play Mm -hmm. my cards, but I calculate stats. I'm running with this. And, And I know that can bother some individuals at times with kind of the speed at which I play, but I do have things calculated and you're like, yeah, once you know your stats, you play it and you go with top, you go quickly. But that's why when when your game happened um, and you're like, hey, I'm like, you win. That's because I had calculated everything out. And that's part yeah. of it is it's still a game. We got to give ourselves an understanding of 
that it is a game that we have to go ahead and it's not our main life. Um, it's a game we enjoy it. Tilt will happen, but we also need to go out and take a break afterwards and move on because it's just a game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think next week, um, if you're down again, um, obviously we're both kind of hanging out at home. Um, you're teaching your children from home. I'm teaching my children from home. Weird story. I've become a teacher um, without the degree. Um, so I'll, I'll tell you that I'm actually <laughs> teaching another 22 individuals too. And I am. Yeah, really, yeah, no, I know <laughs> it, it's triple the work. Like I'm a little envious of anyone saying, Hey, I'm just sitting at home. Um, I am up before I am up later in order to get the lessons that I'm recording. So this is a nice little break for me just to take a break from the kids. And I do love them. I love them dearly. Um, so I, I hope things return back to normal for you, for your kids, for all of our kids. Yeah. But it's just we're making the best of it at this point in time. Yeah, we were. We just. I know my wife sent. Um, so for those of you who don't know, we have a, a. My son has autism, so my wife actually just it, it, dealing with this during this time where you have a child that's very used to a routine has been interesting, um, and trying to explain to him that like my the trying to explain the coronavirus to. Uh, my almost 11 year old son has been difficult um he wants it to go away tomorrow as i'm sure we all do um he is drawing interesting pictures um some of which i wish i could submit to somewhere because the most recent one was a cloud of lysol um which is the funniest thing i think i've ever seen um so my son wants to spray the entire world with just lysol and just get rid of this. That was his game plan. Is he's just gonna he's going to make a cloud of Lysol and spray the entire world, and it'll just go away. Oh, there it is! Fantastic. See, it, um, and Wookie, we need those perspectives from our kids. I will actually tell you, yeah. my ten and eleven year olds that I teach, um, they're in the same boat. They're struggling with how to view it, and so yeah. if you have kids at home. If you have a spouse, take that time, talk to them, just see how they're doing. That's our biggest piece. And as a yeah. teacher right now, I'm telling you, I am not only taking care of your academic needs for your kids and your social and emotional being, I'm checking in with them, but I'm also yeah. reaching out to the families as well because the adults yeah. need the same support. So keep in contact with each other, use the Keyforge community and know yeah. that, you know, yeah, we have some interesting drawings and things. But our, our kids, this is, they just don't know how to handle and to manage this. And that was the main thing. And I, I know that I was getting into the story of my wife sending the text message. She's like, you guys need a raise. And she meaning teachers in general. Like, you guys need a raise. Because I don't know how you deal. I mean, I've got three children. And I'm already praying that they go back to school any day. Which doesn't look like that's going to happen. But just thinking of, like, you dealing with 22 children, what, 10 hours a day? What does school go for? Eight hours or 10 hours? So we are there for eight. We're with them on academic contact time for six. That means that I don't go to the bathroom for six hours. But I will tell you, there's just a calling. There's a passion. I absolutely love it. And I wouldn't change it for anything. Um, I actually had a different opportunity, a different career opportunity early on to go into pediatrics. And I am still so happy that I made this choice. Exponentially less money, but that hasn't yeah. brought me the happiness. I am here for the kids and to see that they want to come check in with me as a 10 and 11 year old, just to tell me what they're working on and how they're growing um, in their learning. It, there's just a satisfaction that's behind it. So while I appreciate the gesture of, hey, we need more money, I'll put that, yes, we do. But please, <laughs> but please know that, you know, we are happy. There's really a joy behind that profession to help out and serve others. No, you guys, I mean, honestly, you're saints. I don't know. I, like I said, I went to school to become a teacher, and I have found out all within this past month that that would have been a horrible career move for me. <laughs> because I'm like, you know, I love all three of you. But, uh... I hate y'all at the same time. Get out of my face. <laughs> nice. Wookie. Leave me alone. Daddy just wants to go to the bathroom. <laughs> so, yeah, it's been uh, it's been interesting. But stay safe out there, guys. Um, and, you know, obviously, AC boards are up. We are running uh, 
daily tournaments over there. There is a new theme every day. I apologize to a lot of you guys. I have not been getting it up as fast as I I would like to. A lot of that has to deal with me screaming expletives at my modem and router, um, oh, Wookie, which is need, not a pretty sight. Wookie, you need to give yourself a big round of applause. And please understand that you are helping our Keyforge community to survive this time by having these events. I know that I have been neglectful in um, spending time more with my wife and my family, but I do look forward to being able to participate. I told you that before kind of the recording. And, and please know the Keyforge community does appreciate it. So while you're worried about uploading um, and kind of some issues on the technology side, you're doing a great job. And please, please, we appreciate it. I'm doing my best. So, I mean, hopefully, eventually this internet thing sorts itself out. I don't know what's going on. Like, you and I have talked about funneling and all this, putting caps and data and all this. It's, it's, it's a mess right now. But I am getting them up as fast as I possibly can. Um, and then I'm actually going to, I'm probably going to start doing them the night before, uh, when I get them as opposed to posting them in the morning, um, as I have been. So that way it gives you full day. Cause a lot of these tournaments are now becoming, um, strange. Uh, Dr. Sheep had an awesome, an awesome idea, uh, for his last, he won one. And then he gave us this, this kind of double sealed variant, um, it was really good. Like I'm like, I would like to play, but there was already 10 people and I didn't want to make it odd. So I was like, that's really, it's one I'd like to try in person too. So when, when next time we all get together, um, I'd like to give it a whirl and see how it goes. Well, but and it's, trying to, it's trying to find balanced decks. So I would put this mm-hmm. out for the AC community. If you think of something that you would like to see, definitely post it in the discord because we yeah. can have a nice running total that uh, might help us um, less um, creative individuals to be able to come up with it on the spot. Not that I'll win, um, but definitely having those up might be something to help just so that we can post them the night before. Yeah, no, I mean, because right now the winner is getting to decide the stipulation of the next day's tournament. Um, and then coming into the weekends, I want to do some longer formats. Um, you know, your triads and adeptives because I'm running it at 830, which means for East Coast people, that's 930. I know not everybody is considered, um, not everybody is, you know, off of work right now. Some people are considered essential employees, so they have, they still have a life. So I figured 930 there, the tournament maybe runs a couple hours. So that's 1130, you know, that's kind of late. But then East Coasters, that gives them... Um, it starts at 6.30, which is right after dinner. If you guys have any sort of, like, uh, what am I thinking of? Suggestions on, you know, if you want me to start it earlier, later, it's not, you know, it just doesn't work in your schedule, and, you know, maybe I started at 8 or something like that. I'm fully willing to take those suggestions. Um, I'm fully willing to take suggestions on anything, whether that comes with the podcast, YouTube videos, whatever you're looking for. Uh, I can do, and I have a ton of time to do it. So... <laughs> Um, you know, that's kind of been the crazy part right now is I'm trying to find that balance for everyone that is in the United States of America and some people overseas. So I know I can't, I'm not going to be able to help everybody, everybody, but I am trying. So please do write those suggestions in the discord. You can tag me, you can DM me, um, you can literally whatever you want, however you want to get a hold of me. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, all the fun So. That's going to do it for us. We went really long after that. We were about 24 minutes, then we went another 20. So that was fun. But uh, we'll see you guys all next week. Hopefully we'll have JR again uh, with us, and we will go from there. Any final thoughts for for the Keyforge players out there, JR? No, stay safe. Thanks for having me on, Wookie. Yep, thanks for coming on. We'll see you all next week. 